Okay. This is a new angle, you know. Do I even know how to film videos anymore? Warning, the following presentation discusses eating disorders. If you or somebody you love suffers from an eating disorder, I will be linking below some helpful links <laughs> for you or anybody else in your life. So with that being said, hello, my name is Monica. Welcome back to my channel, Mooney Reads, and this is where I talk about books and things. And yes, the title is clickbait. No, I'm not quitting YouTube. There you go. You can like click off now if that's the only thing you were interested in. Um, but I, I, I wanted to talk to you because I, I, first of all, I want to talk about my favorite book of the year, which is Good Morning Midnight by Lily Dalton Brooks, which if you saw in my last upload, which I don't know when it was, um, I read in November of this year and blew me away. But first, I want to talk a little bit about putting yourself out there on social media and what that can do to a person in recovery like me. Um, I think this all started with the video that I posted called Bringing Back My Bookish First Times Tag. I will link it up here if you want to see that. But basically, um, in that video, I was looking back at me from seven years ago um, and I was reacting to a tag I did and tagging some people to do it, you know, as you do in booktube land and the booktube world. The problem was that I don't think I should have done that because the Monica that you saw in that video was um, very different to the Monica you see today. Obviously, there's a seven year difference, so you know, there's gonna be some differences. But also, um, <laughs> that Monica was um, in the height, not the height, I guess. Well, I don't know. I've had ups and downs of um, food restriction, um, eating very little, getting very little nutrients, um, thinking that a piece of fruit for dinner was fine. And I looked very different. And the moment I posted that video, I knew it was a bad idea. People were very nice in the comments. Nobody was said was like, wow, you got, <laughs> you know, nobody told me that I got bigger. Um, a few people did mention that I looked different. I, I know I looked different. I don't know why people need to mention that. Like, well, it was seven years ago. Of course I looked different. So I, it, upset me and um, I have mentioned before that I'm not completely in control of my eating disorder tendencies at the moment. It's quite the contrary actually. The, the eating disorder tendencies are in control of me most of the time. And posting that, seeing my face next to each other, I promise you, which of course if you suffer from an eating disorder, um, my body dysmorphia was all over the place and and then I felt bad because I shouldn't feel bad for gaining weight darling like then you know it's 2020 almost 2021 you you know we don't feel bad for for that kind of stuff but when you have a literal mental illness that makes you feel like crap for your body changing um, it's very difficult not to feel like crap and I actually made other videos and then I never posted them because the idea of looking at myself while editing and remember what I could look like just didn't allow for it it just didn't allow for it it doesn't and I'm not saying I, I, I just I don't it's very difficult because I I am very body positive towards other people. I would never, never feel that somebody's body changes or wherever are ugly. But it's like, it's, it's, it's a mental illness that I have where I see myself and I cannot accept the way that I look. That's it. And even if I had... I want to make this very clear. Even if I looked exactly the same 
weight wise like if my face looked exactly the same everything I would still see a difference like that's the thing about body dysmorphia is just that I see things that are not there basically um, and it's very difficult to be online and to have this platform and to sit in front of a camera and then edit yourself and look at yourself and not feel something you know and not you're looking at yourself constantly i believe most of us are narcissists that really like looking at our own faces <laughs> but it's a, it's a joke it's a joke okay um but yeah i i just wanted kind of an explanation as to where i've been why i've been gone it was basically to save myself from going down a path that I know leads to nowhere good and um how am I doing? Am I doing okay? Uh some days yes, some days no. And that's why I haven't been filming. Also because work <laughs> work has been crazy. I haven't picked up a book at all. I've just been like I've been dealing with mental health issues um, and working. <laughs> That's basically been my life lately. And also, you know, I, I that another thing that I want to talk about is I didn't feel like picking up another book. I just didn't feel the need for it. So I wasn't going to force it just for booktube. Like that's not a thing that I do in my channel. I know some people really get off on that whole like, oh, I'm reading a book that nobody likes you know like that kind of stuff also my hair is growing out i don't know there's a lot of there, there's a lot of stuff going on but that is my mental health update i hope you enjoyed it i don't want to talk too much about my eating disorder um on here because you don't come here for that you know and it's okay if you sp skipped everything that just came before um, I'm, I'm cool with that. You know, if you just want to hear about Good Morning Midnight, then, um, welcome. <laughs> Alright, so let's talk about my favorite book of the year. Unless I somehow read something better in the next, like, 10 days, this is going to be the number one book. I am going to do a ranking of books that I've read this year, but just know that this is going to be number one. Yes, it did beat out Born. I am as shocked as you are. But basically, what is Good Morning Midnight? Good Morning Midnight is a book about um, an apocalypse, but in, in a very strange way. Um, we have this scientist who is well-known, well-respected, well-loved when he's young. But as all things do, darling, he ages. <laughs> and when he ages, his he just becomes that one old dinosaur that once was brilliant you know and he knows this and he decides to go on this last journey to Alaska to study um you know stars and and, and celestial um formations or whatever and while he's there something happens there are like People come and they tell him, hey, uh, well, not him. They tell the whole crew that's there because there's a crew. Uh, there are rumors of war happening. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know if we're going to get you out of here. Like, there, there won't be any more transports. This is it. If you don't get out now, you're staying here. And we don't know when or if there will ever be another transport to take you back to civilization you know you're gonna be stay stuck in antarctica and due to the fact of the way he lived his life which you get to find out throughout the book um you realize he has nobody to go home to he has nobody waiting for him so he makes the decision to stay he's like you know what i'm gonna stay here i'm gonna look at the sky until i die that's basically it Alongside of this, you have a group of astronauts that have gone to Jupiter. This is the first time we send somebody to Jupiter. It's incredible. They're so happy. Until suddenly, they, start, they stop receiving messages from Earth. And this, at the beginning, it's like, well, maybe we're too far away. Maybe something happened. But it slowly starts to break down the morale of the group. As you can imagine, 
imagine like going so far away from home, going so from far away from everything you know, and not knowing whether you have anything to go home to, to go back to. So we have these two storylines. Now I will warn you, this book is slow. It's very slow. And you're thinking the whole time, like, of course you have this man who has a space and a center, you know, who, who my cat wants to say hi, hi. You wanna talk about this? <laughs> who has the ability to communicate with these people, but he doesn't even know they're out there. And you don't know whether either of them are ever gonna communicate. And you get to find out about their lives. There is a romance here that I think is a beautiful, slow burn, wonderful romance, you know, and I, I just think this is one of the slowest, gentlest, Gentle, gentle, gentleness is not, is that a word? Well, but it's very gentle book that I, I have ever read. It's so sweet. And, and, and it, I mean, you put together certain pieces pretty quickly, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because the ending of this book is masterful. It's that moment of, I'm not going to spoil how it ends, but there is this moment of instant leap of faith that I always tell people to take. I'm a very much a leap of faith person. Like, if you're thinking about changing your job, do it. If you're thinking about doing this, just do it. Just do whatever. Whatever it is that you are thinking about doing, do it. And this book talks about that. It also talks about regret and how we treat people and how we love to blame our past for our present. But the reality is we can change at any moment anything we want, which is kind of funny when I'm talking about this, you know, and, and how when you have treated people badly, that doesn't just go away just because you're a brilliant scientist or a brilliant anything. If you treat people badly, you are going to end up alone. But there's always that moment where you can make a change, where you can change something for somebody. And maybe it's not for the person that you hurt. Maybe it's not for them but maybe it's for somebody else. And I, I don't know, this book just draws you in so slowly. And I think it's it's a book where you do really have to take your time reading it. I took my time reading it and yeah, although I will um, throw out there a trigger warning for suicide ideation. Okay, there, there is a lot of that, but then there is, there's, this this book just gets to the core of what it means to be human of what it of really what makes us incredible really because i i i know that a lot of the times we think being human um means we're the apex predator and all of that when when i actually think being human the thing that truly sets us apart from other animals is our ability to be curious to the point of exhaustion <laughs> and also our ability to forgive and our ability to move forward you know not that animals don't do that not that other animals don't do that it's just that humans remember I mean I, I stepped on my cat's tail I don't think she forgave me for it I just think that she forgot you know um, I hope she forgave me, but uh, we'll never know. And um, there's a lot of forgiveness that happens in this book. There's a lot of acceptance of things we cannot change in this book. And accepting them to the point where they don't destroy you. There are so many things, so many times I hear people say, I wish I had done this differently. This eats me, like, this eats me up at night. I think about this all the time, you know. We all have those moments, don't we? How incredible would it be to forgive ourselves? Do we ever get a resolution in this book about what happened to Earth or what happened to the people that <laughs> that went silent? Um, no, we don't. I just, just, just so you know, we don't. And it, um, that's not a spoiler. I think it's it's throughout the whole book that there is no explanation for why Earth stopped transmitting messages or anything like that. But what there is is a beautiful story about a man who has wronged so many people in his life, 
and at the end of his life he wants to do one right thing and then a group of people who just don't understand what's happening and just want to go back home and they are faced with the fact that there might not be a home to go back to and what that does to you i think that speaks a lot about our fears as children of you know that moment of going from child to adult where you want to go back home i know we all have that moment you know like that moment i don't know if it happened to you in college or if it happened later or earlier in life but you just want to go home but the home you remember doesn't exist anymore i highly recommend that you pick up good morning midnight by lily dalton brooks i'm really happy that i got is this a first edition because it still it doesn't have the netflix um that this is going to be yeah this is a first edition so it doesn't have the little gonna be a netflix movie on here because there is going to be a netflix movie made about this book but they completely change it but i'm still watching it because i, I love it so much and it, i think that the changes they made were intelligent for the movie because otherwise you just get a lot of like scenes of space <laughs> you know? um i think that the changes they made were interesting i want to see what george clooney does with it i George Clooney has become my favorite actor ever since I saw remember that vlog where I saw Solaris like he's suddenly he's like I love him you know <laughs> so they're gonna make a Netflix movie about it it's coming out on the 23rd of December I'm gonna be watching <laughs> you know to see how it goes I I think that yeah this book just really touches on your heartstrings and w when I was looking at my list of sci-fi that i've loved this year i realized that most of the sci-fi no not not most of the sci-fi all of the sci-fi that i love the reason that i love it is not the science fiction aspects i'm not big into the science fiction aspects i'm big into the human aspect within science fiction if that makes any sense and this is definitely that i think this is a soft gentle novel that creeps up on you and by the end all you can do is take a leap of faith and hope that things turn out all right all right so um yeah literally mid good, good morning midnight by lily dalton brooks um i love it i hope you love it and yeah uh, that's pretty much it i'm gonna take uh i I have been taking clearly some time to deal with my um, eating disorder. Don't worry, I am going to my doctor for it. It's not like I'm just sitting here taking my time, I don't know, doing nothing. <laughs> like, just thinking about it. Uh, no, um, I'm, I'm, I'm working with my doctor and I feel a lot better. I still don't feel okay. My body dysmorphia is going crazy and I know I'm gonna look at this video and I'm gonna think, I'm gonna say what was I thinking, why would I post that? And I actually deliberately put this at an angle where my face wouldn't look m more, I don't know, more gaunt, you know? Like it would, like you're straight on, which is, um, I don't know. I, I made, I don't know why I made that decision. I guess I decided that if I'm gonna go through this, I'm gonna go at it 100% and, you know, do, Kick my eating disorder in the ass. That's what we're doing. So, <laughs> um, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for sticking around. Um, I, I can't believe you're all still here after I stopped posting for a while. But the reality is, making booktube content makes me happy. It really does. Like, I am elated to have made this video. Even if I know that I look like shit in it. Because, and it's... Like, Growing up is pixie cut. Can we talk? Like, I look like Javier Bardem in No Country for Her Old Man, okay? <laughs> but that being said, I am really happy that I made this video. And I really had so many plans, but you know what? I'm not gonna look back. I'm gonna look forward. And I'm gonna take my break as a time to really get ahead on my posting schedule. That way, I don't have so much pressure on myself when I come like when I go back to work because I have three weeks off starting today and I'm so happy so yeah
as always without any further ado i bid you adieu with a friendly reminder that i post whenever i am able to post <laughs> because if i say monday wednesdays and fridays you know it's i don't know if that's gonna happen at the moment um it, with anybody suffering from mental health notes that um that like sometimes you can't give yourself schedules <laughs> But I will try to post as much as possible, possibly three times a week. That is the goal and will continue to work on myself. And without any further ado, I will see you in another galaxy far, far away. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for sticking around. I appreciate each and every single one of you. Bye. <laughs>